Uh, I am Vinay Dadwal from National Remote Sensing Center, one of the centers of Indian Space Research Organization. Uh, nano satellites you know, bring some advantages. Basically, uh, many can be launched together. They are smaller. So the entire cycle of assembling a nano satellite is shorter. Most importantly, they will cost less. So in a industry where private people are now building satellite, cost will be a very big advantage. Then we have to worry about their performance and performance over time. So what we need to figure out is how a group of nano satellites, SWARM, as a whole at much less cost are able to deliver over larger sites because they are simultaneously present over much more scattered points over the globe and deliver more information. Yes, in fact, industry must prepare for it. Uh, the remote sensing or earth observation technology has seen a large number of uh, shifts from single satellite to very complex satellite to smaller satellite and then to train like an air train. Uh, then what we now have to understand is these nano satellites are here. They have intended and unintended consequences. But we must prepare to make best use of the opportunity watch what nano satellites will offer to us. Video is a very important uh, approach to capture quick phenomena. But what we need to understand is what are the capabilities of this imaging system, how long you can take a video, and then how will you position your system to look at that place where this change is happening. As far as the analysis is concerned, videos are used on highways, videos are used at so many places. So I am not that much concerned about the industry, EO industry, in trying to be able to process video data. They will find partners, they will buy the appropriate companies or they will develop the technology. So that is not the issue. The, if video is to become a very important source of information, how many cameras you need, how you will be able to focus them and what is the observation window for the video. I think these are the questions for overall system design we have to understand. All this space business, it started with just giving raw data or images, digital, photographic or whatever form. Then obviously once you have collected so much data or you are collecting high frequency data, that data alone doesn't really solve most of the problem. And since people are paying for it, they are entitled for some information. Information could be on water, could be on crop size, could be on forest, could be a burning forest fire or anything. So they don't want data, they are looking for information. Now obviously why do people need information? They need information to make a decision and act on that information. Now what is happening, if you have many satellites, if you are covering large area, now this information, each information comes with its own idiosyncrasies, applicability, non-applicability, error. So the next step will be to convert it into actionable information. So obviously the user would like to pay for it. But more importantly, now if you accumulate large amount of data, if this change is a part of regular change, is a abrupt change, or whether the pattern and speed of change allows you to predict something. So we need to take a holistic, comprehensive analysis of that data, asking a different set of questions. That is why analytics will come into picture. Now the question is who will do it? The user is not an expert in analytics. 
So obviously, he needs somebody who will do this job for him. That is why, but analytics is very used very loosely. It can mean so many different things in so many different situations and applications. Other than you have large amount of data and data is flowing at a very high speed. But the type of questions and the type of analysis, I am sure, are quite different. Uh, see, from the very beginning, when you put a satellite up, you observe specific places on the earth at specific times. So you do not observe all places on the earth and all the time. So obviously it is limited by your capacity to image. Secondly, it is limited by the electromagnetic radiation, what you are using. Obviously light is not available in the night, so you cannot use it, right? But more critically, the demand is a function of what it costs the user for his application. If you have more supply and you do it efficiently and cheaply, the demand will continue to increase and increase. So for quite some time, in my opinion, it will be a data limited. You have huge data, parallelly you have huge unused or unlooked data. So this paradox of excess data and less data will continue to be together. Now to this, if you add multiple suppliers, all of which not only have not fully compatible data or each data with its own special characteristics, but the data as a bundle is also not available. Everybody wants his own constellation only. So you additionally build over capacity and you are not really making use of a resource. You, you have to imagine the orbits are heritage of mankind. By putting satellites, we are blocking that space, we are creating debris and still in a sense we do affect the capability of the entire human race to use that resource. So in my opinion, collaboration must be done. It, it is important to collaborate. Earth observation analysis to be supported by crowdsourcing or geographic information or maps to be supported by crowdsourcing, yes. But whether industry, earth observation industry should rely depends upon what the industry is offering to the customer who is paying. No customer would like that you give unverified data to him for which he has paid to an organization. Because there is a cost, there is a liability. Same way crowdsourcing may not be a very important approach when you want legalistic, enforceable or other type. Having said that, Crowdsourcing is a very important tool because citizens are aware there are many, many areas where this information, uh, there is no substitute. It is the only way quickly to gather information in a disaster. First response, verify your maps, uh, put changing conditions or even in a forest say that yes, they have found a tiger mark at this place. So it can be hundreds of things. Crowdsourcing is important, but whether industry should use it as a part of its solution to customers who are paying for it, whether scientists would like to use crowdsourcing as part of their scientific analysis or where there is a enforcement and legislation and verification whether crowdsourcing will come is the question for which I don't have an answer. My feeling is perhaps not. <laughs>